So, good evening, gentlemen. Welcome back to the old computer shack. This is all working, as you saw in the previous video. This is the the UART that controlled, formerly controlled, the tape interface. Now it's accepting tape images over TCP sockets, and I'm going to do the same thing with the console UART. Wow, I cut my finger today sometime. And, um... Then I'm going to put another ESP32 into my terminal, um, and then magic will happen. Um, then I'll be able to use that terminal to connect to other machines elsewhere on the internet too. So, uh, yeah, fun times. Let's heat up the soldering iron, shall we? Oh, 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 oh. oh excuse me. Arduino program out here on the other screen so that I can fill in the pin numbers in the data structure. Would you like to see it while the soldering iron heats up? I suppose so. It's pretty shitty, but there it is. I just need to fill in these values that have been copied from the tape port down here. And, um, as, as, as we solder things on. Right. Let's do that. Uh, I used to strip this Kynar wire, which you kind of have to strip off like a pretty pretty large amount, otherwise it's really hard to strip and then trim it off and solder it on, but these days um, I discovered that it's far, far easier to just burn the insulation off the stupid stuff on the end and then solder it on. Maybe that's cheesy, but uh, I never claimed to not be a cheesy dude. You just have to, you know, keep your soldering iron tip clean because that shit fills it up pretty good. Uh, let's, we, I guess we ought to tin these, uh, these pins on this uh, sockeroo here, shouldn't we? I reckon so. Do this one this way, maybe you can see that. Nothing really complicated there. Just trying to get some solder on the pin to make it a little easier to uh, solder the wire on. Uh, so this pin here is the um, RX data pin. And we'll try to tin our wire a little bit here so that it sticks a little better. A little bit of schmoo on the end of the machine here. Stick it right on there. We suppose. And then we'll just very carefully go around here and hook it to a pin. The only one we don't want to use is uh, D2 because it's connected to the uh, onboard LED that we're using for signaling purposes and some of the I think some of these up here um, are only usable as inputs. I'd better check the data sheet and make sure these on this side these top four GPIOs not the uh, EN pin but the, the four underneath of that those are inputs only, so we don't want to hook to any of those. One, two, three, four. Uh, so that should be fine. I'm going to have to clean my bench one of these days. So we'll trim that. We'll put a uh, glob of solder. Solder. Sold air into the hole. Seems like it always takes more than you think it should, but I guess it's because there's no pin filling the hole uh, today. And then 
we will burn off our insulation fun. Mr. Beefy, what are you doing? Are you going to jump into my lap? Are you a good boy? You should wait for me to finish soldering. Yes, sir. You're not gonna, are you? No, sir. Just a minute. I'll pause the recorder for time and pet you until you're tired of it here in just a moment. And then we shall route this up here out of the way. And that gentlemen is all there is to it. The only gotcha here is that we're hooking the um, RX clock and the TX clock to each other, right? I'll record that too. So, that is D13. So, RXD in our console data structure goes 13. Now let's do that, uh, those clocks with the funny business while you guys are still here for demonstration purposes. Not that I'm some kind of expert or something, just that I thought you might be curious. So let's see, it's the TX clock is, that's the, this is the receive clock over here. This is the transmit clock over here. I pointed to them backwards before. Sorry about that. I am fake news. And then we shall come around here, something like this, and hold it in our little grabby fingers and burn the insulation off the middle of the wire. Burn, burn, burn the insulation off the middle of the wire. A little more than that, a little more than that. We mustn't be stingy. Then once our fingers have been burned, our special tender little fingies. Get some of that solder off of there. There we go. We shall fold it in half with our fingy nails, which need trimmed badly, and then squeeze it with our squeeze-naders. I suppose it's probably possible to fold it over and then burn the insulation off. I've never tried that. You might end up with insulation stuck in the middle somewhere. I don't know. Hmm. Let us add a dab to that. Something like that. And get a little more on the tip, a little more on the tip, and then come around here and solder it on there. Ah, oh, that was a little warm on my fingies. Oh well. And then we shall go up around here, preferably not grabbing those transistors, and snip, snippety snip. Add a glob to our pad. Remember, gentlemen, the bigger the glob, the better the job. Mr. Beefy, are you digging in the litter box? Are you digging in the litter box? Are you going to drop a giant deuce 
Are you going to make your douche dropping sounds for the people on the internet? You are the douche droppingest cat that I have ever seen. Alright. We'll solder on here. I need to put a new tip on my soldering iron. Oh, wait. We're not soldering to one of the little pins. Why am I putting solder on the tip? Durr, durr, durr. Because I'm dumb. Yes. Solder that right on there. Very good. And route these up here. Out of the way. I'm not done yet, but I had a thought. Frightening, yes, I know, but, uh... Do you gentlemen think, see, if we made little interposer boards that took SIP headers or something and plugged down into these sockets and then you soldered a regular socket onto the interposer board and plugged your, um, your UART back into it, then it could have, um, like a, a, a double row header that you could plug a ribbon cable into, um, with uh, with like an IDC connector on it, and then the the, the ESP32, it could also be soldered to an interposer board that would be hot glued to this board, and it would have headers for those ribbon cables, right? So you could it would be like a an easier solution with pre-manufactured circuit boards that might be easier for people to install if they don't want to fiddle with all these kind of wires. My my question is. Um, See, uh, this would be the only time that I ever do this, probably. I, I have no, no use for, for such a thing, because I'll just keep using the prototype, right? Um, but do you think that any of you gentlemen would be interested in such a thing for converting your own H85 cards um, into wireless cards? Uh, because if so, I could probably, I could probably lay something out in uh, KiCad or something like that, and... Uh, we could make some boards or something like that. Ah, uh, but I just don't know. I just don't know if there would be any interest in such a thing. So let me know, um, either in the comments here on the uh, Seb HD. Is that how you say it? The Society of Eight Bit Heath Computists um, on on the mailing list, uh, and we can talk about it or something. I'm sure this. Vidyaru will be posted to the mailing list anyway, since I'm spamming up your all's place. Anyhow, yeah, that was the uh, that was the thought I was having. I suppose that with an interposer board, um, it could just hang off here to the side. It could just plug into both of these sockets at the same time. You wouldn't have to glue anything to the board. You could just rig it up so that you plug the. Uh, the ESP32 down into that interposer board, unplug your UARTs, plug the board in, plug the, plug the uh, UARTs back into the top of the interposer board, and Bob's your ante, right? That would be pretty pretty easy. It might be too thick. No, nah, probably not. I don't know. Probably, there, there's got to be some clean way to do it, to make it easy for other people to do. If you guys think that would be interesting, whatever. All right. All right, that's that's all soldered on. I wanted to show you the way I mounted this. I just um, I just put some standoffs through the holes in the corners of the ESP module, ESP32 module, and then I um, I hot glued it down to the board. Now there's no solder mask on this board, so all of these traces like are exposed, right? Um, so I, I was very careful not to push the um, those standoffs too far down into the hot glue. The hot glue is acting as an insulator between the standoffs um, and the traces on the board, and that, that seems to be working fine. Um, this right here is a ground wire, and I've, j I've been powering the thing just off of USB, but once it's permanently, you know, mounted in the machine, the USB cable is going to come off. That's only for programming the ESP32 module, right? Um, so we have to supply power to this thing um, through the board somehow, and this this thick trace up here, this one right here, that's uh, that's the five volt power rail coming out from uh, from the regulator back here, right? And um, the USB power supply, it has a diode soldered into the board um, to keep uh, 
um, power that comes into this VN pin on the ESP32 from back feeding into the USB port and uh, and blowing something up. But uh, there's nothing stopping the VN pin here from trying to power the five volt section, like the five volts on the whole board, um, when uh, when it's plugged into USB for programming uh, when the system's on, and that's a little inconvenient. So what I'm going to do is is just take this rectifier diode, uh, random rectifier diode, and just stick it through one of these vias in the five volt rail with the stripe up, of course. I'm just going to solder it into one of these vias, and then solder my uh, uh, power power wire um, onto that. So I think that'll work fine. The back of the board does have solder mask on it, and I did have to scrape the solder mask off of the back of this via to solder this diode in here. And let's hope we don't uh, let's hope we don't cook the diode, huh? Oh, being a big rectifier diode like that, I'm sure it'll be fine. Those small signal diodes, I've screwed them up by over overheating them with the soldering iron a couple of times, but this here ought to be fine. I, I was hoping to not have to make any modifications at all to the board, and I guess this technically isn't a modification. It's not like I'm cutting traces or anything. I just scraped off a little solder mask on the back of the board where you can't see it, so if we wanted to put it back um, how it was from, uh, well, not from the factory because it was assembled by someone sometime or other, um, we could do that and it would be all, like, vintageified and stuff, right? That is the ugliest glob that I have seen for the past five minutes. I've got to do something about that. Perhaps turn up the soldering iron. There's great big traces. Um, they take a little more heat than usual. And that's a pretty big diode, too. I think the 1 in 4006 is, what, a 1 amp rectifier diode? That is way overkill for this, uh, <laughs> for this application, but... Uh, I have plenty of them, so whatever. See if I can burn my fingers here. I'm holding it in on the other side with my fingers. Yeah, that's pretty hot. That is pretty hot. Ouch. 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 Oh, I guess that'll do. Looks like ass. Can't see it from the front, though. Good enough. You're probably thinking to yourself, Lee, you dummy, there's going to be a voltage drop across that diode and your ESP32 module is not going to be seeing 5 volts. And that is correct, however, it's immediately going into another regulator on the ESP32 and getting regulated down to 3.3 volts. So even if there's like, uh, whatever it is, like 4.5 volts coming out of this diode, I think that'll be plenty... Um, for a 3.3 volt regulator, the lines that are the the, the I/O pins are 5 volt tolerant though, and 3.3 uh, volt is, is high enough to register as a uh, as a TTL high signal to the UART, so it just works. Pretty, pretty ugly. Mm. All right, let's coax our pretty red wires up to the top without breaking them hopefully and put this ugly old boy down here on the bottom where we can't see him and hopefully hopefully that'll power up the board right in the machine let's see if anything smokes ah very good it initialized as it should and you probably, yeah, I guess you could see that on the camera, couldn't you? Very good. All right. Uh, well, let's let's plug in the USB cable right quick and put it in the machine and try it and make sure that nothing is going to blow up because with these mods done, I'm going to close up the machine. I should have mounted that a little bit higher. <sighs> to make it easier to get in there with the cable. I'm going to close up the machine uh, and put a terminal on top of it, I expect. 
Alright, wait, that's not the right thing. This is the right thing. Alright. The ESP32 is being powered via USB and hopefully it's not going to smoke and quit working when I turn on the main power. Very good. I will hit dump. You should see the blue activity LED come on on the ESP32 as it is dumping data. Very good. It appears that the module is still working. All right. Time to button this thing up and finish the firmware. That being the least fun part. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. I will post another video when the rest of it's working. Goodbye.